Good morning, good afternoon. Thank you everyone for joining this Eclectic IQ webinar. It's going to be a brief 40, 45 minute session. Um, our topic today is uh, building a strong CTI foundation. So I'm hosting it. My name is James Collins. I uh, run our enterprise sales team here at Eclectic IQ. I've been with the company um, uh, for almost eight years now, or actually a little bit over eight years. Uh, my colleague, Ben, Ben Webster, is going to be doing most of the talking today because this is a technical presentation. I'll ask Ben to introduce himself um, when he starts presenting uh, in uh, a few minutes. So just to set the scene for those folks who don't know who Eclectic IQ is, please allow me to just position ourselves. So we are a cyber threat intelligence platform provider. So we have a tip. That's all we do. That uh, threat intelligence platform has been in the market since the end of 2015. So it's been used by customers, typically large enterprises, large government agencies, uh, defense companies, and managed service providers uh, for going on 10 years or so now. Uh, and our customers are pretty much global. So we support those customers from our head office in Europe, in Amsterdam, uh, and we have uh, regional locations uh, around the globe, in the UK, in the United States, and in Singapore. And we work with an ecosystem of threat intelligence providers. So that could be open source providers as well as premium intelligence providers. I think we're working with about 70 or maybe nearly 100 of those uh, companies today. And we also, in order to facilitate the integration of intelligence with cybersecurity, we work with the common cybersecurity vendors where we would want to integrate that. So the SIMs, the SOARs, the firewalls, and all of the cybersecurity controls where we might do one way or bi-directional integration. So challenges that um, our customers face, or generally the challenges that I suppose all organizations face uh, in the threat intelligence space is, you know, uh, threats are growing rapidly. There's more threats every day, and those threats are constantly evolving. Um, and information about each one of those threats is widely reported so you know every threat may be reported by multiple times so it can be so extracting the relevance uh, from that information be, can be quite overwhelming for intelligence departments not only that not everyone has an abundance of uh, cyber threat intelligence skills some people do but for most organizations um the skilled resources uh, to you know analyze that data and convert that data into an intelligence product in a uh, quick time frame can be a challenge. Not only that, when they do have knowledge, sometimes that knowledge is siloed. So departments may know of the intelligence, but they're not sharing that. They're not collaborating with each other, which results in inefficient production or maybe even lost opportunity uh, because you haven't acted quickly enough. So we want to focus in today's webinar on these four use cases, and Ben is going to present those um, using the Eclectic IQ Threat Intelligence Platform uh, as a tool in which these can be achieved. So looking at how can we uh, do faster collection, bring stuff in in a much more automated way, how can we make sure once we've brought the data in that we can prioritize it around our, our business so we can not panic as with all of that volume of data we only act when we know that this could be relevant to our business or to our threat landscape. So prioritization of intelligence and then how we can collaborate. So how can Intel teams, so you might have a, a big department with many or you might uh, have a smaller department, but you still need to collaborate with your peers in CTI in order to act efficiently. And also you need to collaborate with other stakeholders across the cyber defense organization. And last but not least, production, how can you produce uh, a quality intelligence product that can be actioned and consumed by the stakeholders within cyber defense. So before we begin, just to let you know, this is a webinar, it's being recorded. Uh, a link to that recording will be shared with uh, everyone who has uh, joined the webinar today. Your mics are muted, uh, but please do put questions into the chat. And then once Ben has finished presenting, we'll make time to answer as many as those questions that time will allow. So for now, I'll come back at the end of Ben's presentation just to field the Q&A and I'll hand over to my colleague, Ben. Ben, over to you and I'm just stopping the share. Thank you, James. I will 
just quickly introduce myself and then we'll make a start on the presentation. And I'll just bring up my uh, screen here and make sure that we've got everything that we need. So hello everyone and thank you for attending. My name is Ben Webster. I've been working with Eclectic IQ for nearly six years. And prior to this, I've worked in security operations and threat intelligence roles in the UK. Today, I want to focus on some pretty high level use cases. The topic of this webinar is building a CTI foundation. So the tools for an organization, business to collect and manage Intel and essentially be able to respond to threats and, and deal with an evolving threat landscape. So today we'll go through a few high level areas. The first of these is collection. Uh, as James mentioned, trying to automate and speed up this process as a business. So whatever our requirements are in terms of Intel and collection of intelligence related to our business's needs, potentially things like Intel requirements, we want to use an environment which can help us to automate this collection as much as possible as we don't want to waste all of our valuable time on data management, but rather analysis. We'll then move on to talk about prioritization. So using the platform to find relevant Intel quickly and matching it to our business requirements, and then the tools available for us to collaborate with each other and produce Intel relevant to our business. And for this, I'll walk through an example of creating uh, report content for a key vulnerability that we addressed recently. Now we'll start with collection. So as with any Intel product, we need powerful tools to help us collect Intel from a variety of different places. What we have on the screen here is actually a mock-up of the data model provided by the platform. If you're familiar with the STIX standard for cyber threat intelligence, our platform uses this as the foundation for its data model. Available on the left, we can see various entities that analysts might want to either create or represent collected data with. And the built-in graph that we see here is just showing us some of the entities and possible relationships between them. And really this helps us to illustrate and model threats when working with data. Many feeds are quite simple in terms of the structure that they offer, things like unstructured reports, lists of vulnerabilities and indicators. And we can get more complex with describing things like malwares, their techniques and how they work, and then contextual intelligence like threat actors and victimology. All of these concepts have different entities that we may wish to use, and this just helps us when telling the story of a given threat. We can then create and augment this data, save this to our platform in the building of a knowledge base, and then reference it later on. And we started here just to show the different types of data that we might collect so that we can then talk about how to bring that data into the platform. And for this, we'll start with feeds. So within the configuration of my platform, I have several automated collection tasks to bring in data from various sources automatically. Uh, and I've tried to label these to illustrate the use case and perhaps the source of this data, whether it's commercial or open source and which sort of vertical of intelligence it might provide data for. For example, simple news posts like RSS feeds provide report content that we want analysts to be able to consume. This is unstructured text that typically re requires analysts to consume to understand and relate to our business. We then have feeds to bring in data like indicators or vulnerabilities that we may triage or use in automated use cases for detection and prevention. And so no matter the type of data that we're collecting, we want to automate the collection and eventual usage of this data as well. On the right, we can see some of the data collected from these feeds. So some feeds will provide information on threat actors and attacks and malware while others will have very specific focus like uh, IOC lists or vulnerabilities. Now with all of these feeds created, we can also collect data manually on an ad hoc basis. So we do have an upload tool for those times when intelligence is shared internally within the business. This helps us support extraction of sensitive information from documents or mapping of CSVs into our intelligence product. Some examples here would be CSVs, which we've mapped interactively from a file that we've uploaded and then turned this into data within our platform for further orchestration. And just like our feeds, all this data will be made available for us to then use with other tooling. For unstructured text, such as simple report content like this one here, various values will be extracted automatically by the platform so that we can find links to related intelligence. So if we find indicators or vulnerabilities, even MITRE attack information in unstructured data, this will be mapped automatically into the platform. 
Now, there's two other ways that we can collect data. One is actually creating it, as we saw on the graph earlier. And the other is using our built-in uh, browser integration, which allows us to collect data from web resources. So for example, here, I might collect data from a blog post. This tool allows us to collect data on an ad hoc basis when we don't have a feed for a source like this. And this will help us extract not only uh, IOCs or uh, vulnerabilities, but also contextual intelligence, such as threat actors and malwares. In this situation, it will also highlight whether we know anything about these threats already. And if we do, then it will show us that information as well. So we can also use our tip in a consultative fashion while exploring intelligence in the wild. I can then collect this data, so I can select some of these entities that I'm interested in, such as the actor and the malware, and I'll create a report within my platform. Here, we'll just call this uh, Team TNT Browser. We'll close our browser integration, and we'll just go back to our tip. My browser appears to be stuck. Let me just give this a, a little unstick and then we'll make a move. Try this one more time. Now within our platform, having collecting that, having collected that report, we can now found the, find this within the search tool. So I'll just search for any reports which had that title of browser and we'll see the report that we've just created. And this will also have extracted some key information and created links to anything else that we've collected. It will have processed all of the unstructured text for things like IOCs and extracted those as well. And any MITRE attack information will also have been extracted from these documents. This allows us to then visualize and collect this data in one place. So I have an example of a report here where the complete text is now indexed and available for search. All of the observable or unstructured data has been processed for indicators of compromise, which we can then filter and use in workflows, and relationships will be found through the graph tool as well. We also have the MITRE attack information, which was in list format on this particular blog post, difficult for an analyst to parse, but within the platform, we can then visualize this data using the built-in tooling. This allows us to enrich information that we're exploring in the wild, bringing it into a single format and then comparing it with other intelligence that we've collected. Over time, as we collect more and more intelligence, we can then take advantage of features in the platform to compare this intelligence, exploring trends and reporting on new and evolving threats as part of our research. And this brings us to the next topic, which is prioritization. So having collected all of this information, Analysts now need a way within this environment to quickly find relevant intelligence to their business. For some, this might mean dedicated disciplines like vulnerability analysis or research for actors or malwares. In these situations, we can use the search tool to explore data for specific topics. A very simple example would be a keyword search where we want to research data of a given topic, for example, ransomware. The platform provides a very powerful search capability, which includes things like filters to help us include various different attributes as part of our search. And this also helps us to automate data management in the platform. So if we want to create a search for all of our high fidelity indicators, reliable indicators, and then export them, this starts with a search query, and then we would eventually export this data through outgoing feeds. The same search language allows us to explore data in detail, so we can explore the data from all of our sources, compare them and find links between different entities, and decide what to do with different pieces of intel. At any time, we can also access and manage this data in bulk, which is an often overlooked but very powerful feature for analysts when we have to make sweeping changes to large data sets. We can apply our own uh, taxonomies, apply things like MITRE attack in scale, and also just label and provide additional information like TLP to sensitive data. We can also export data at any time in multiple formats and customize this output as well manually. So we might set up workflows to do this within the business automatically, but it's still very valuable to be able to do this on an ad hoc basis. Now to actually prioritize this data, so to decide what is important within the platform, I can either start researching data myself 
or I can take advantage of the alerting capability of the platform, which also uses search to notify me when critical new intelligence is made available. Within this very similar looking view, I can create rules based on search queries to notify me when key intelligence for topics that my business is interested in is collected by the platform. These rules can run for data collected by feeds or users, anything that's been created or collected by the browser integration. All of these different sources will then bring the data into the same intelligence data, uh, database, and these rules will then run against all of it. As an example, if I'm focused on vulnerability management, I can create rules for specific assets. Here I have 14 results concerning Cisco ASA appliances, and this allows me to then quickly filter and focus on newly reported vulnerabilities for this topic. From this view, to assist me with my prioritization, I can assign these entities to tasks and individual users within the platform. This allows me to notify my team and distribute work and very efficiently point them at intel that we need to triage or assess. For example, I'll assign this one to one of my colleagues and he'll be notified that he now has a new task telling him that there's an entity that he needs to triage. Over time, we can build up tasks within the platform for various different use cases. With multiple teams using the platform, this is also an excellent way to manage work within the database. Any new intel discovered for different rules can be assigned to the relevant users. Once work has been assigned, I can then remove these from the queue. So this just serves as a tool for prioritizing and triaging new data as soon as it appears in the platform. The tasks themselves, together with the entities notes field, allow us to then capture unique insight when exploring this data. A problem often overlooked by a lot of security software is that we can explore and view data in detail, but there's never anywhere convenient for us to actually include our own insight or our own detail. We often find ourselves moving away to ticketing platforms where all of our insight and information from our business is captured in one place, and then all of our intel is then referenced from that, and we have to do a lot of back and forth work to compare. So being able to apply our own insights within the platform directly against the intel allows us to include those insights as we go. Our colleagues can then see that this information is applied to individual entities. So every entity in the platform has a dedicated field. We can see that notes have been applied to these. We can even see this within the graph in case notes are used for multiple entities. The tasks themselves offer another place for us to collaborate with comments fields for back and forth discussion. And so at any time when we're working through the platform, there's a lot of areas in which the analysts can collaborate. And this brings us to the next topic, which is collaboration. As I said, a lot of systems in the industry tend to overlook the ability for analysts to communicate within the system. And we often find ourselves having to use other systems to achieve this. Within the intelligence center, we can use the notes and tasks, but we can also create these workspaces. These are areas of the platform which let us define how we want to organize our intelligence. Each of these acts as a home for all of the intelligence for a specific topic. For example, when conducting training with our customers, we tend to provide examples of models and threats and best practices when working with intelligence and also provide information on external training material, as you can see here. This allows us to revisit concepts and investigations that we've performed in the past. We'll find things like graph investigations or MITRE attack layers saved to these workspaces for future reference. To show you a real example, we'll move to a topical workspace as you can see, I have several created here for things like actors or vulnerabilities or malwares. I'll move to the Avanti workspace here to show what an actual completed workspace might look like once an organization has responded to a new threat, organized all of the intelligence and ultimately produced data. Within this workspace, we can see several graphs have been created. Each of these contains a subset of information that was either created or explored as part of the investigation. Using these built-in tools, here, for example, we can see the common thread of a single CVE connected to several reports that have been written by the organization and some of the raw intel that was part of the investigation. These entities may also provide a space for notes. Analysts can compare and review in entities that they've created themselves. A lot of customers may wish to do interactive report writing processes directly within the platform where they can link it to their raw intelligence. And all of the topical data related to this threat can be found in this one area of the platform. 
So in the future, when we want to access produced intelligence or the raw intelligence that was involved in these investigations, it's all here organized, ready for us to access. We can see several tasks that were part of this work, potential file artifacts that may have been included, and also the intelligence itself. In the browse view, we can actually see all of the data that was involved when exploring this threat. And this is a mix of raw intelligence, as we can see from the source column here from various feeds that we have in the platform, as well as reports that our vulnerability team has actually created and shared with our organization. And this is where we start to talk about production of Intel. So while we're collecting all of this data, we may have subscriptions to commercial feeds or do a lot of open source collection of data, and we bring all of this information into our platform. But this is considered raw intelligence. And very often, the vendor intelligence that we collect is not quite aligned to our business in a way where other teams can consume it efficiently. No infrastructure or vulnerability team wants to receive a three-page report discussing a new threat. They want to receive essential and key information related to their business. Where do we specifically have a vulnerability? How do we as a business address this? What options are available to us to mitigate this risk? No vendor will do that for you, and it requires analysts to translate that content into the business's language first. And that's the process we've gone through here in this workspace. So we started with several raw pieces of intelligence, both reports, for example, this Palo Alto blog post that was collected discussing the vulnerabilities, as well as the more traditional intelligence from sources like CISA's exploit catalog or the National Vulnerability Database. Each of these offers a potential investigation thread for us to explore related information using the built-in tools such as the graph or the search. Depending on the source we're working with, they'll provide different information, such as key metadata, links to actors, campaigns, and malwares, or MITRE attack classifications for helping us to understand the trends. At every step of the way, we can then save this work to our workspaces, to our investigations, so that it's available for us in the future. In this case, I might save another graph to our Avanti workspace, where we can add a new thread related to the alien vault data. This is then immediately available to every other user who's involved in this investigation with me, and they can access this again in the future. The next step was to create tasks for users to write several advisories for the business. So whether we decide to do this overall, strategic and technical audiences for all of the vulnerabilities together as a threat, or for our vulnerability team, maybe they need to have write-ups for the individual vulnerabilities. So for each of these, I've created a task, I've assigned this task to myself to produce a report, and then once I've completed that report, I've added it to the task and to the workspace. Historically, I can now access this information. I can see if the task had any involved steps or additional referenced intel, if there was any discussion or interaction, and I can access the created content that was produced for our organization. In this case, we've written shorter advisories for both strategic and technical audiences directly within the platform using the built-in addition tools. For example, if I edit this report, I have access to the built-in editor. This provides me with a rich text interface with built-in tooling to assist with writing. And this also supports media as well when things like diagrams or pictures are relevant. The advantage of producing reports within the platform is the ability to then link these directly to related intelligence. So if I ever want to see what this report was discussing, I can pivot from the report through the related vulnerabilities, IOCs, actors, or malwares, and then find other related intelligence and explore that as well. I've also organized this data within this workspace in a list format so that I can access this more easily. And this allows us to provide a little bit of organization as well. We do this in our platform with something called a data set, which you can think of as a collection of entities. And these can also be automated with search queries. On the left, we can see a few different data sets that we've created. These are just acting as sort of folders, collections for key pieces of Intel broken up by type or purpose. And on the right, we can then see the data contained within each of them. For example, all of the strategic advisories that have been written regarding this threat can all be seen here and easily accessed in a single collection. This one's even based on a query so that if a new one is created, it's automatically filed here for future reference. Similarly, for the technical analyses, we have a separate collection for these, and the raw intel itself can be found in another collection again. 
So at any time, if we're collaborating together as analysts, we both have access to the same data and we're not scrambling with the search tool uh, or our alerts to figure out where that data is. We're organizing it methodically as we go. And this is essential for analysis teams as this is one of many threats that we will have been responding to at the same time. We might be writing up how to mitigate a few vulnerabilities in a given month at the same time as investigating malwares and actors, changes to techniques and recent developments in how malwares are delivered or executed. We're constantly fighting this arms race. And so having a platform where we can manage these threats, organize our data and collaborate efficiently is essential for any organization. Now, this brings us on to the last couple of topics, which are producing and sharing intelligence out of our platform. So we've already seen that we've created several advisories or summaries. This can be done interactively within the platform by editing entities so we can write reports ourselves and link them to intelligence. We can also automate this process as well using the built-in tools. If, for example, we move to another vulnerability use case, here we have some uh, Apache vulnerabilities that we may wish to summarize. We can either create a new report, so I can choose to create a brand new entity, connect this to my intelligence, either here visually or through the create menu in the platform, and then I can actually fill this in and provide my analysis. But this will require a fair amount of wrangling and a bit of manual effort. What I can also do is automate this process. So I can ask for an initial generated report, which will be sort of targeted to a specific audience. Really, this is to give me a boilerplate for a given threat. So as with the previous example, where we produced, we produced both strategic and technical reports, here I'm producing boilerplates for both of those to save myself time. Again, very important if I'm working on multiple threats, and I don't want the repetitive work to take up most of my time. Now, I don't want to just generate these reports and share them without review, but this is saving me a lot of time in producing the initial intelligence. So rather than this empty report I have over here, I now have a summary already prepared for me of the entities that I selected in a particular format. And most importantly, I can now edit this and make some changes to make sure it suits my business's needs. We also created one for the strategic audience there. So we have the second report also available for us to edit and then potentially share. Sharing data out of the platform is very easy. We can either quickly export something at any time to share this data. Useful if we want to just look up a previous advisory and then share it or quickly get some intelligence into the hands of those who need it. And we can also automate this process as well. For this, we'll go back to our outgoing feeds menu. And this is where we would create uh, automated workflows for sharing intelligence. Each of these feeds is essentially running on a schedule to automatically take data of our choice and prepare it in a certain format. In this case, we're preparing data in Stix 1.2 format, and it's taking all of the indicators in these collections that we have linked here. Each of these is based on a query in turn, so the entire process is automated. Our various feeds and users uploading data will all contribute data to the same place, and then if any of that data matches our query that we have up here, it will be automatically prepared for export provided by this feed. We can do this multiple times for different stakeholders, different requirements, not just for indicators, but also for reports. So I have the same set of IOCs here being prepared in multiple formats and also split into different chunks depending on our needs. We might have multiple appliances which only accept certain types of data or certain formats of data. So each of these can be configured for that specific audience or infrastructure. We can then create feeds at any time, selecting the data that we actually want to export. For example, recent IOCs or reports that our team has created. We can filter through all of the collections created in our platform. For example, all of those Avanti reports and then prepare this data in a certain format. In this case, for automation, I might choose to send emails within my organization sharing the data in either HTML or PDF formats. This means that as an analyst, once again, I'm not thinking about data management. I'm focused on investigation and analysis. My operating procedure is to produce a report. I might then have to add it to a particular collection as part of my sort of standard operating processes. But once that's done, I know that it will be shared out of this platform automatically. 
And so again, we're just reducing the amount of data management the analysts have to focus on, giving them more time to spend with the intel itself, producing investigations and understanding threats in more detail. Now, at this point, we've covered the majority of the use cases for this webinar. So I'll just do a little bit of a recap uh, and then we'll take some time for questions as well. So initially, we started with collection. So discussing that CTI foundation for an organization. Here, we're really after an environment which gives us the tools to collect data in different formats, different cadences, both manual and automated, but also give us the freedom to create and annotate intelligence as well. For prioritization, we have the alert capability and some of the organization tools such as tasking to help us efficiently process new intelligence and manage the data in the platform when there's multiple teams all working together in one place. For collaboration, the workspaces, the ability to apply notes and comments and annotate any intel that we're working on is vital both for the collaboration process, but also just organizing around multiple topics. And then finally, production, creating and sharing that intel, producing threat models within the platform and building up that knowledge base over time for our business, both as an efficient way to process new threats, but also as a permanent reference for all of the previous threats that we've addressed. I'll stop here and we'll take some questions. Uh, I'll just say thank you very much for your time and attendance, and I'll hand back over to James uh, for some Q&A. Thanks, Ben. Um, so I make it, we've got about eight minutes left, and uh, I'm seeing a few questions coming in. So um, first one I pick here is, um, are you able to search information in any language? Uh, yeah, good question. So. The search tool of the platform actually uses Lucene as the syntax. Now, this would support keywords in, in any language, assuming the Intel contains it. There is also a newer um, NLP interface. So if you do want to search in a different language, if your Intel contains a different language, or if it's in English and you just prefer to work in your native language, um, this will actually take queries that you write in natural language and convert them into Lucene. This is also very useful to learn the syntax of Lucene if you're not already familiar with it, as it does take a little bit of getting used to with the Boolean logic and the possibilities. Um, okay, I've got another. Hold on, let's have a look. Okay, can, can the platform be used for case management? Uh, yes, we could use this for case management. Uh, we explored this somewhat with the concept of workspaces. You could conceivably create a workspace for any individual incident. For example, if you have an incident response process, then you might want to create a workspace around maybe a particular case. We do also integrate with uh, incident tooling such as SEAMs, SOARs, case management systems. And this essentially takes advantage of, uh, sorry, I'll just bring up the graph of the citing entity, which is part of our data model. So when we're working with threat intelligence and we're talking about things like incidents or cases, it's very common that we get these sightings back from those integrated tools. These typically act as uh, jump off points for us to do investigations. So I might have an alert rule, which tells me anytime there's a new sighting within the platform. Uh, in fact, I do have one here. And these sightings, we can then explore in a sort of case by case basis. So for any one of these entities, as we saw with other intel, I can then explore the content of that sighting and see what related intel I might have in the platform. And this essentially helps us to speed up that response time. So we, we usually integrate with uh, incident response tooling for our customers. It's not a replacement for that process, but it helps to enrich and speed up those processes. OK, uh, more questions coming in. Hold on. Uh, is there an API and can that use is it NIP? NLP, perhaps? Yeah, oh, of course. Sorry, my eyes are going. Yeah, NLP. Um, there, so there is an API. Uh, this is separate to the uh, incoming and outgoing feed interfaces. These are essentially Python workers that we can develop for various interfaces. There's then a separate REST API for accessing the platform directly as well, if you want to. Uh, the documentation for this is public. As for uh, NLP, there's no specific NLP endpoint for this currently for that natural language search interface, um, but you can access all of the data in the platform 
through the uh, entity's endpoint. So if you want to run searches, for example, then this endpoint will allow you to query for that data. That said, we will be exploring um, sort of newer solutions for both extraction and parsing of data in our next few releases. It's certainly a, a key topic for us. Okay, next question. Uh, do you inter integrate with Greylog? Uh, good question. We don't have an integration today, but we do uh, build new integrations upon request for our customers. So if you wanted to integrate with Greylog, whether that's to collect, uh, let's say, sightings like we were talking about earlier, so incidents from the log system, or if you're looking to push data to use it within Greylog in some capacity, uh, that would be accomplished through either the incoming or outgoing feeds. Um, to give you an example, when you create an outgoing feed, we, we briefly showed sending email, but you can also find commercial or product options in here as well. And in these situations, you might select something like Sentinel, and then you just have to plug in the relevant information. This will essentially package Intel and then send it to that tool. Uh, the inverse is true if we want to collect data from that source instead. Uh, okay, I think we've got maybe time for um, maybe one more question. Um, okay, how do you show trends of threat actor techniques? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. So there's a there's a bit of a history with um, actor techniques within the industry. So when uh, Styx 2.1, for example, was first defined, they created the attack pattern and MITRE, the, the MITRE attack framework initially started with MITRE attack information. In fact, I think I have it in the platform here as a source. So sometimes when we were describing threats, we would have these related MITRE attack techniques. For example, here we have uh, bi-directional communication. But over time, the industry explored uh, this sort of MITRE attack framework, and it, it feels better as metadata. So we ended up creating dedicated features for this. So within our platform, uh, as we can see here with several of the reports, they're actually labeled with MITRE attack information. This is how we would recommend exploring trend data. Now, this is reports, not necessarily actors specifically, but the concept is the same. We can then view this data within the visualization tool and this allows us to show a trend across that information. So you can expand the scope of this to include whichever entities you want, whether that's actors, campaigns, or whichever data you've collected and you're representing, and then visualize the trend here in this view. And this also offers a few other options. It's not just for visualizing the trend with um, a heat map, but we can also drill down, apply our own annotations to each individual layer that we create here, and see which specific entities uh, have that technique. So if we wanted to see something obscure, for example, like uh, unsecured credentials, we can quickly drill down to the uh, one report, in this case, discussing Scattered Spider, that has this technique referenced. I hope that answers your question. Um, we didn't cover this feature in too much detail, but beyond being able to visualize the trends, we can also save these and provide our own insights as well. And this ends up being part of the library within the platform. So we can have sort of multiple layers that we've explored historically for this kind of data. Thanks, Ben. Oh, there's one more question related to that. I think it's um, how often do you update your uh, attack uh, version? Uh, yeah, uh, so currently we are up to date. I think a few releases historically we've updated just as they updated again, uh, but we're currently up to date with 15.1, supporting all of the matrices. Uh, we will update this as soon as they update the framework as well. So if there's a new MITRE attack release, then we'll be updating this uh, to that release as well. Excellent. Um, there's a few more questions which uh, we'll answer offline because we're now out of time. So I'd just like to thank everyone for attending uh, and let you know that we'll be doing another webinar in October or maybe the later later end of October where we will present different use cases. So thank you again for your attendance and for all of your questions. I hope you found it helpful and see you next time. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Bye-bye.